My brother Mark, 40, won the lottery when he was 20. It was $1,000 a week for life. He was young and wanted to travel. He dropped out of school and has spent his entire adulthood basically seeing the world. He comes home to visit every few years and we FaceTime with him when he's near a signal. He doesn't travel first class or stay in expensive resorts, so he's actually built up some nice savings. He came home with a girlfriend, Haley, 28, this year. They met when they got stuck in South America during the global issue. She's been traveling since she graduated from university and she works out of a laptop. I, female 54, live in the same city where I was born. I love it here. I love being close to my parents and my grandchildren and most of my siblings. Mark hated being the youngest of eight and always swore he wouldn't have kids. Our parents were older when they had him and they didn't have the energy for him, truth be told. Mark came home when he was 30 and told all that he had had a vasectomy and wouldn't contribute to the world population. Haley is a pretty young thing and she's also intelligent and sweet. I can understand why anyone would fall in love with her. We were having a family barbecue to celebrate Mark being in town. There were maybe 30 people in my parents' yard and house. I was talking to Haley about her future plans now that the world opened up again. She said that she was ready to settle down and start a family. I asked if they planned on adopting from one of the countries they travel to or if they would try North America. They said that they talked about it and would be having at least one child of their own. This may be where I messed up. I asked where Mark got his procedure reversed or if they were having in vitro fertilization. She went very quiet and went over to Mark. They spoke and they left. Mark called me later that night to scream at me for ruining his life. He hadn't told her and he was planning to continue to travel and maybe adopt if they decided. He said I shared private medical information and that he never wanted to see me again. I apologized over and over. I seriously had no way of knowing that he was planning a future with this girl without telling her a pretty big piece of the puzzle might be missing. I feel bad for him, but I think he should have told her. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your brother wanted to build his marriage on a lie. That poor girl would have gone through years of a living nightmare trying to get pregnant and society immediately assumes there's something wrong with the woman if she can't get pregnant only to find out that he'd been snipped. And then she would have wasted her most fertile years. If she didn't want kids or only wanted to adopt, then it wouldn't have been your business to say anything. But she wants a natural child and it would have been cruel to hide the truth from her. Your brother is mad that his lie got out. He was going to try and run out the clock. There are a few deal-breaker topics you should cover before the wedding, before engagement really, and kids are a big one. If he was willing to lie and deceive on this one, I wonder what else he was lying to me about. This is all his fault for being a lying idiot. It's not your responsibility to keep his secrets, especially if you don't know it's a secret. She dodged a bullet. Honestly, how could you have known he didn't tell her? She brought it up so most would assume she was aware. He's an idiot for not telling her, which is on him. Probably why he lashed out at you because he knows it was wrong. You did this woman a huge favor. You showed her that Mark doesn't care about what she wants in life as long as he gets what he wants. From someone who was once married to a guy like that, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Sierra and I have been dating for four years. I absolutely love her and felt like she was my soulmate. I knew I wanted to propose two years into dating, but I decided to wait one more year so that I could get into a better situation financially. Last year I proposed. It was a private proposal on the beach where we went on our first date. She looked at me and said, I want to marry you but not right now. She said she wasn't in the right space personally to get engaged and to give her some time. That stung, but I was okay with it. After all, I put off proposing to be in a good position. It's only fair I give her that chance. It's been a year since then and I decided to propose again. This time I asked our friends to help me set it up because I wanted to do something nicer. We orchestrated a nice dinner and a proposal in front of a nice fountain in the city's botanical garden. Everything was ready, dinner went great and we went to the fountain. She saw the roses and everything and then I got down on one knee and asked her to marry me. She teared up and told me, not just yet. This stung really badly. I knew I wanted her in my life forever but this was the second time she turned me down. I asked her why and she told me the same thing as last year. I asked her if someone was holding her back, maybe family or friend, and she just said, I just want to make sure that this will work. This hurt me more than the two rejections. I told her if she isn't sure after four years, then what will make her sure? She asked me to give her time and I told her no. I told her I wouldn't keep wasting my time and love if she keeps saying no. I told her that I can't do this anymore. 
She began begging me not to leave and said, Fine, I'll marry you, just please don't go. That made me mad, but I didn't say anything. I left. My phone has been blowing up with some of our friends, her parents, and her telling me that I'm an idiot for throwing away a four-year relationship because she said no and that I was a big baby. She just needs some time. The other half of our friends aren't on my side, but they're not on hers either. I don't think I'm an idiot for this. Did I overreact? Am I an idiot? If so, how much more time am I supposed to give her? Edit, we're both 29 years old. The second proposal wasn't done in front of my friends. They just helped me plan it and stuff. It was just her and I. We had discussed marriage shortly before I proposed the first time. She was into it and even told me she couldn't see herself with anyone else. She seemed eager about marriage, which is why I was shocked the first time and then angry the second time. Not the idiot, pretty cut and dry. If the answer isn't heck yes, it's a no. Four years is plenty of time. You're perfectly right to move on. She cannot expect you to wait for her forever. She hasn't even given you a legitimate excuse for why she can't. Yeah, there's something she's not saying. It can be very mature to look at yourself critically and say, I'm not ready for marriage, but then you have to be able to articulate why. Does she have doubts because of XYZ? Does she feel like she needs to work on communication skills? Is there something about OP that she has trouble with? Just telling him I need time with no further explanation is unfair. My first instinct is that she knows she doesn't want to be married to you but is afraid of being alone. If you had used the threat of a breakup to coerce her into agreeing, I'd say you were wrong. But it sounds like this is a deal breaker for you. If she's not ready after four years, she's not likely to be ready in the fifth either. Her family and friends are messaging you and calling you names. This part seems really messed up. Get away from these people, OP. You deserve better. My fiancé has a long history of either making no effort to learn basic tasks or doing them poorly, so I have to redo them. One time she called me while I was at work asking me to come to change her tyre because she got a flat. I told her I couldn't leave work because I had an important meeting and she must change it herself. She called me again three hours later asking if my meeting was over and if I could help now. I asked why she didn't just put on her spare tyre, to which she said she didn't know how, so instead she went in, got food at a cafe nearby and left her car. I asked why in two hours she didn't just Google how to change a tyre. She said her dad has always come and changed her tyre for her. I was pretty annoyed and told her I'm not her dad, so she will need to learn how to do these types of things, but ultimately left work to help her change the tyre. She also hasn't attempted to learn how to change a tyre since then. We recently bought a home and it's the first time we've had a yard. We split chores evenly. In reality, I end up doing more on top of all the cooking. I mowed the first week and when the second week rolled around, I pointed out that it was her turn since the grass was getting long and the next day was one of the few days when it wouldn't be extremely hot. She looked puzzled because apparently she just assumed I was always going to be the one to mow. She said she didn't know how to start the mower, so I showed her how to start it, adjust the height, add gas, etc., and she agreed to mow the next day. I came home from work and she hadn't mowed and I asked why. She said she couldn't start the mower. It's a brand new Honda mower that's the easiest thing to start on earth. Annoyingly, the mower was in the exact spot from the day before, so I know she didn't even try. Recently, we bought new light switches. Her request, since the old ones were ugly and cream-coloured. There were about 16 of them in total that needed to be swapped out. I told her I'd swap out the ones downstairs if she did the ones upstairs. I did mine that day and she said she'd do hers later. Well, five weeks passed and I asked if she was ever going to swap them out. She told me she couldn't figure it out. Mind you, I'd never done this before either, but I watched a five-minute YouTube video and just read the instructions, and it was pretty easy. I asked again if she's going to do them and she says, I'll probably just leave them as is, since they don't look that bad. I was furious. She was the one who wanted them. I bought them. Because she took so long to do it, they were past the return date, so basically I'm forced to do it. I told her I was tired of her weaponized incompetence, and she said she wasn't doing it on purpose. So then I told her maybe it was just regular incompetence then. She's still upset at me. Am I the idiot? I can understand her not wanting to change the tire, especially if it's in a dangerous spot, but dang, there are a bunch of options she could have chosen within those three hours. Not the idiot, but I think you've enabled her to this point. The problem is she doesn't make an effort and knows almost no matter what that you will just do the job for her. The red flag is waving right in your face. 
you're going to be in an extremely unhappy and potentially short marriage if this cannot be resolved. If you are a woman posting about her boyfriend who refuses to learn to do dishes or sweep the floor, these comments would be applauding you. She's intentionally refusing to learn how to do these chores, so you end up having to do them. Stop enabling her. I don't think this is weaponized incompetence because these aren't all common jobs anyone can feel comfortable doing. Lawn mowing is the exception. Maybe it's just me, but I know loads of men and women who can't or don't change tires or change their light switches. There's a very real danger of doing it wrong. But if a man or woman pretends they don't see mess or can't do dishes or laundry, that's a different story because they're such basic tasks that are required for any adult. You are the idiot. Changing a tire requires a lot of muscle. Switching out a lighting fixture? Heck no, I'd electrocute myself. Mowing the lawn is also a big heck no. I'm a petite woman with no upper body strength. Dividing chores doesn't mean splitting every chore in half. You're so bent on her doing her fair share that you've become a big jerk. Most women didn't get the same type of life skills passed down to them as men did. My brother can do any construction project because my father taught him how. I wasn't even allowed to go into dad's workshop. Consider making a list of chores and finding a happy medium. My girlfriend comes from a well-off family, vacation homes with boats and the works. I was super intimidated at first, but they're down-to-earth good people and everyone I've always interacted with has been kind to me. My girlfriend bought me a jacket that I wore to my parents' house and my sister peeked at the label. It said Valentino. My sister was being catty, asking what's the point of wearing expensive clothes if no one can tell. I told her I've never seen any of my girlfriend's friends and family members flash anything with logos. It's either simple clothes or a kitsch design. Most of them would find having logos plastered over everything crass. My sister thought I was calling her out because she saved for months for her Louis Vuitton bag covered in logos. She took it as an insult and me being snobby towards her, and I was just telling her my reference point that I've never seen my girlfriend's family, friends, or anyone on vacation that had logos over everything. My sister was extremely mad at me and called me out, saying that I was a gold digger and I didn't know crap about anything. I left my parents' house and my mom texted me later saying I shouldn't have said that because my sister spent months saving up for her bag and now she thinks it's tacky. I told my mom I was sorry and I didn't mean to insult her or make her feel bad about her bag. Not the idiot. Um, most people I've observed who come from generational wealth do not show off their labels. It's people who have new money who tend to do that. Wealth whispers, it doesn't shout. Your sister's purse is screaming, I had to save months to afford this, and it's true. It's actually screaming, I'm most likely fake, lol. There are literally so many fakes out there that the chances of seeing a real one on any given day are very small, so most people just assume everyone they see is a fake. If your sister felt called out, it's because she knows she's guilty of flashing labels for status. The most humble person I ever met was a billionaire client. He wore grubby blue jeans and a polo. His hair needed a trim and his eyebrows were overgrown. You would never in a million years know the kind of wealth he had. Nicest man ever, too. On Monday, my pre-tween son came home missing his front tooth. It was a bit wiggly, but not ready to be pulled out. I asked what happened and he showed me his baby tooth in a baggie and said the nurse pulled it out. What? I emailed his teacher and he said my son was wiggling it a lot and asked him if his tooth was about to fall out. My son said he didn't know and sent him to the nurse. He said he was expecting her to look and to call me if it was ready to come off. Instead, she pulled it out, and my son was uncomfortable with it. He said it hurt. I spoke with her today, and she said she had zero business doing that. She said his tooth was pretty loose and worried he might swallow it. I said, then why didn't you call me? You are not a dentist, and you caused him pain. She said she's been a school nurse for years. I said, then you should have known better, and you're a disgrace and unprofessional. I did go to the vice principal who confirmed that it is not within a school nurse's scope to pull teeth and she should have notified me instead. She was angry that the school nurse didn't even send a note that he saw her, which is standard practice. She did tell me I could have toned down the daddy bear a bit. OMG, not the idiot. I'm horrified on your son's behalf. That is not okay in any way, OP. Under common law, a school nurse can't do that without express permission or in an emergency situation, which doesn't apply here at all. I hope she learns from this, but sorry your son had to be the example that will teach her. She did something she was not cleared to do, which I'm pretty sure is illegal. What if the tooth wasn't fully ready to come out and something had gone wrong? 
Your son told you he felt pain and he was scared. He's likely never to want to go to see her again. So don't turn it down. Report her. Sue her. Wow, this story is full of ridiculous idiots itself. People screaming, file a lawsuit, file complaints with the Board of Nursing, it's assault, are crazy. It was a loose baby tooth. You are the idiot, OP. Every parent in this world helps their kid lose their baby teeth. Not many of them are dentists. Even if the nurse should have contacted you before, it's okay that he got it out. You would have pulled it out anyway at home. She's the school nurse. Have some respect. If a dentist was needed, she would have called one. This is not a major medical procedure. You should have thanked the nurse for helping him and ensuring he got the tooth. Otherwise, he might have eaten it with his lunch or accidentally swallowed it, and that can cause harm. She caused him pain. We've all survived the trauma of losing our baby teeth. Few of us had a nurse around when it happened, dude. Calm down.